Hello everyone and welcome to this Lightarama tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the creation and behavior of motion effect rows as of version 6.3.4. Motion effect rows are required when using the Smart Pixel Motion Effect Generator, which allows for significantly easier creation of pixel effects compared to channel level sequencing. They're also necessary if you'd like to use motion effects across a group of traditional props. We'll start in the preview editor, which houses all of the information about your props the shape, network, unit ID, channels, and more. If you ever need to add new props to your display, you'll do so in the preview editor. Then the props will appear in the grid for the associated sequences. After defining the general settings for your prop, you'll pay attention to the section on the left for creating your motion effect rows, which, in this example, will allow us to create smart pixel effects for this RGB matrix in the future. The best practice is to create all of your motion effect rows at the preview prop level before you start creating sequences. Any rows defined in the preview prop will automatically appear in every new sequence you create and associate with that preview. For the left side settings, this matrix is defined as pixels RGB. I've optionally set the dimming curve to 30% and left the channel order at RGB. When you first create a preview prop, there will be zero motion effect rows defined. Click on this button to enter the Motion Effect Row dialog. If you've used Lightarama prior to version 6.3.4, this window will look a little different due to the improvements made in this software version. Rather than foreground and background, the list where you'll define your motion effect rows now shows front and back to indicate how the effects will render if you layer multiple motion effects in your sequence. We'll create a full prop motion effect row to cover the basics. Clicking Add will create a motion effect row over the entire surface of a prop, meaning that later when you choose a spiral, butterfly, or wave effect, the effect will be applied over everywhere with a white highlighted pixel, or in this case, the entire prop. You can change the name of the row in this field to help you remember the surface covered for sequencing. Another common option is to use the Subdivide button. Here you can choose to subdivide into evenly spaced rows and columns, like isolating tiers or strands in a multi-strand prop like a matrix or a tree. You can choose the number of rows and or columns, set a base name, and choose how the suffix appears. After you click Save, you can click on each row in your list to see the highlighted pixels and view the surface area for the motion effect row. The final subsection option is Custom. Make a new row using the Add button, then switch this dropdown from None to Custom. At this point, you'll see the pencil icon become active for freehand drawing, but you can also choose the square icon to click, drag, and draw rectangles. If you hover over either of these icons, you'll see the tooltip letting you know to hold down the shift key if you ever need to erase. If you have a high density prop, you may need to zoom in for custom subsections by using these magnifying glass icons. You can reorder how effects will render in your sequence by using these green arrows, and access a few more features by clicking the edit menu, like reversing the order of a group of rows. If you need to copy one or more motion effect rows into another prop, or from your sequence into your preview defaults, the edit menu is where you'll find the copy and paste options. Lastly in this menu, you can create a combined row, which is especially useful for high density props. Select a few rows, then choose create combined row. After you give the row a name, you'll see that the two selections from the rows have been combined into a new row but the original rows are still left in place. If we toggle between the two custom rows, we'll see gray pixels for one choice, helping you see where you've already selected pixels in other custom motion effect rows. After you save this dialog, you can save the prop, make these same updates or creations in other props, then save your entire preview. At this point, you can create a new sequence, remembering that every new sequence you create will automatically have those preview level rows visible for you in the sequence. A change from earlier versions is the symbol used to indicate a motion effect row. Anything associated with the preview prop defaults will now have a bar underneath the familiar triangle symbol. Anything that's a subsection additionally has a square icon. If you make an update to one of these established default rows at the preview level, the change will automatically apply down to all of your sequences where the row currently exists. If you right-click to manage motion effect rows, you can add additional motion effect rows that are unique to just this sequence. Maybe in this sequence you need three tiers instead of four because of something you hear in the music, but you don't need that to be a part of your preview defaults. When you add these new rows, you'll see that there's a triangle symbol with no bar, indicating that these are unique and only for this sequence. Rows associated with the preview defaults cannot be edited from this menu. 
If you need to make a change to a preview default, close this dialog, double-click on the row in the sequence grid, and you'll be prompted to make the update to the row at the default prop level. After saving, the change will be applied automatically to this sequence and all other sequences that contain this prop and default row. At this point, you're ready to start creating effects. Switch to the motion effect type, decide if you're using keyboard shortcuts or click to create, then enjoy exploring the options within the motion effect generator and all of the LOR shared favorite effects. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss a notification about new videos.